Okay, so this is lesson two. Yeah, you meet lesson one, you can easily find it on both our Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, unlike previous series that we mainly teach on Zoom and we, we need to record it or check it, but right now on both Facebook and YouTube, once the live done, the video is ready for you. So you can check uh, lesson one on both platform, MMI, Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, yesterday I touched on a history of leadership in a nutshell, like a brief history that uh, this world need leadership, need leaders since thousand years ago, yeah, before Christ's time. And I share with you about the Axial Age, that great thinker in different parts of the world in that 400 years, yeah, around 800 year to 300 year before Christ. And they have thought and then convened yeah, different good idea for the better world. I share with you this Western style leadership level five leadership and Eastern style yin and yang leadership. You remember this map? <laughs> yeah, this how Western model ideology start in Greek in those area with Socrates, Aristotle, yeah. Expand that Western science based world to the West, to America, to different parts of the world. And China still there and right now rising, yeah, with a lot of original Chinese idea that they want to share to the world. And Buddha is right there in the middle, India, <laughs> the middle way. Today, we're gonna to explore more with the Buddha. But before we move on to those new kinds of leadership, I want to show you that the old ways of leadership that you announce from the top and then everyone needs to be quiet and you must follow, if you don't follow, you are out and control the narrative with the major media, yeah. yeah. In the old day, we call it like a gatekeeper. That when you control the major media, you can uh, control the message even you're not so good. But right now, imagine Facebook itself <laughs> that create this tool and Mark Zuckerberg said, oh, is democracy is giving right to the people. Today, Facebook itself <laughs> faces its own challenge that if the leadership is not well respected or just one employee can make the whole company shaken. And that's what like quite alarming that I, I told you that I was in Harvard Business School and they are looking for new kinds of leadership that you need to be good from inside really, you need to really care, not for the sake of uh, success or for the sake of a good image and try to be good, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, you may heard about it. <laughs> There's a bombshell from the former Facebook employer. And then it's not just uh, a show on 60 Minutes, she went to Congress yeah, and there might be some regulation, there might be something that really trouble Facebook, yeah. And the thing is, she announced that Facebook prioritize profit over people, allow the fake news, allow the hated speech because it create more traffic. <laughs> uh, I myself, I learned mass communication <laughs> before I become a monk we cannot conclude now that it's real or not real because 
Mark Zuckerberg come out and then write so many pages on Facebook denying this allegation that's no, that's not true. For sure, we are in the middle way. We not uh, align with any party or group, but I just want to show you that in this wisdom age, that everyone has access to technology. Everyone has access to the microphone and Facebook itself who hand the microphone to so many people have its own trouble right now. So you can imagine we are the leader and you create a tool. Now your tools trouble you. <laughs> so we need to see further what will happen. But this is a time that's so interesting that anyone can move something on the map with your voice, with your courage. And today, with a new kinds of leadership in wisdom age, I would like to discuss this formula. Yeah, this is what I share with Professor Jeffrey Sachs at Columbia University that make you very interested on what we're lacking at Harvard as Oxford or Beijing, Shanghai, Tokyo, or in US and Singapore, what we are lacking that why those institutions that create many intelligent leaders in some way, in some area that not a peaceful world peace yet. So academic excellence, yeah, like what I just shared, plus selfless character, we will have great leaders. But the same economic excellence, plus selfish character, yeah, you know, like a profit over people thing. We don't know yet what will be the conclusion, what the truth, but those kinds of selfish character doesn't care humanity, just care for money and power. We will have big troublemaker. Do you agree with this formula? Yeah, if you agree, type number two. Yeah, type number two. If you agree that, yes, it's so true. The normal kinds of, you know, Western style education that even in Thailand, yeah, we, we take it from the West that uh, focus on economic excellence and do not touch kinds of spiritual part that they got separate between state and church or state and temple. I don't know how to call uh, properly around the world, but that kind of system, worldly one system, spiritual one system, it doesn't work. It make people not embrace that morality or ethics side that's so important. It cannot be on the sideline. It must be in the middle. Wow. Yeah, we have our agreement with this formula. So with the new class of leadership, we hope we can have more servant leader, not arrogant leaders. And that's what we hope for, that if they have selfless character, they become servant leader, they serve, they help people no matter how big their title, because if they are uh, spiritual and then learn Dharma wisdom, they know one day you, you, you're smaller than your coffin and you are not so big. And one day you need to say goodbye. What you did in the minds of many people, that will destine what kinds of leader, what kinds of acceptance from around the world will become. Yeah, and for sure, everyone know, <laughs> seven of COVID, seven habit. I'm gonna jump fast because if you guys are familiar with the midway teaching, I try to bring those Western Eastern combination. So he famously popularized seven habits of highly effective people. And in the eighth habit, he shared that we need to go deeper to be successful be effective is not enough. You need to be great to be in a game. 
in a new business model. Why I connect with Stephen Covey on this talk today? Because he predicts that in the human civilization, it start from hunter-gatherer, move to agriculture, move to industrial, move to information, knowledge worker. Now we at the edge of IT and wisdom. Yeah, and what's happening right now, we see that you need wisdom, you need kindness. Everything can reach and then you cannot hide anymore. You need to be truly good to be accepted. Yeah. So we're entering wisdom age right now. And I share with some previous teaching that in the book, it had been that one chapter called Blending Wise, Searching for the Third Alternative. And Corey convinced that one of the more challenging problems in life is how you deal with conflict. Yeah. And then he shared that if anyone can have the skill to solve human differences, wow, that could be a very powerful tool. And this was quite shocking to me, but happily shocking. <laughs> he said the third alternative isn't my way, is, isn't your way, is our way, is not a compromise halfway between your ways and my way. It's better than a compromise. A third alternative is what the Buddhists call the middle way. A higher middle position that is better than either of the other two ways like the tip of a triangle. Wow, this is cool. Yeah, and you know, this is not a spiritual book. It's a business book by one of the most respected guru in business, Dr. Stenakovi. He taught at Harvard Business School and he himself, he is a Mormon, one of the very strong Christian group in America. But this might be the fact he didn't pro Buddhism, it's just a fact. And that's what the Buddhists call the middle way. It's better than a compromise, right? A spot, B spot. Yeah, this is like a C spot at the top. You don't need to be 50% uh, happy and then they be inside, I'm not happy. But you, point A totally understand point B, point B totally understand uh, point A and then creatively come up with policy. You know, we need it everywhere in the world right now. We need listen and out from your own conclusion. Let it open, right? And uh, with that uh, inspiration about the middle way concept, I take a look what Kobe talk about that middle spot at the top, and he said, we need to develop this four thing, body, heart, mind, spirit. I find that in the Stipatana Sutta, in the Pali word, that, oh, body, heart, mind, spirit, that Kobe mentioned, and he mentioned the middle way, but he himself, he's not Buddhism expert, right? So he touched on general concept, but he didn't go deep into Pali scripture. We did a sort of that, that, that middle way concept. So I connect ancient wisdom from Satipatthana Sutta, the four foundation of mindfulness, also taught by Longpuwat Paknam, to the Western model of body, heart, mind, spirit. So Gaya in Pali is the body. Vetana is a feeling, it's a heart. Jitta is the mind. And Dhamma, the truth is, Spirit, body, heart, mind, spirit, that how we find selfless leader, yeah. So I come up with now, uh, it become a subject in school, inner peace education. Yeah, what is this? Inner peace education or IP is the scientific, systematic, simplify and result oriented platform of Buddha teaching. Yeah, so that will be like the main 
curriculum, the main uh, system that I will share with you on this new kinds of leadership. And please take a look, follow me. With this body, heart, mind, spirit, any leader will try the best to have great health, great relationship, great wealth, and great fulfillment, especially the last one, fulfillment. But in the reality, health problem, relationship problem, money problem, and even fulfillment problem doesn't feel good, unhappy at the top. Yeah. How are we gonna fix this? We need to find some model that we can achieve healthy body, caring heart, intelligent mind, and enlightened spirit. Yeah, I'm not joking. I showed this to Ivy League school. That does the goal. We need to develop something, not just economic excellence, but character building process in mm -hmm. Ivy League school. Yeah, enlightened spirit, mm -hmm. like what I show a professor. <laughs> he kind of, wow, that's kind of uh, ambitious goal for the human, but he agree. And through that, we develop in inhibition education, physical wisdom, emotional wisdom, and intellectual wisdom. So this will be the main curriculum this week in the middle of leadership. I'm gonna teach you loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. Hopefully, you can become selfless, character leader, great leader. Are you confident for that? Are you confident you tie number seven? Yes, I will have more and more selfless character, selfish character, no more. And I will not be a big troublemaker. I will be a great leader. Yeah, tie number seven. And as I mentioned, now many things pop up. Yeah, this is Satya Nadella who trained from Microsoft. Empathy make you a better innovator. And there's a book come out more and more on this spiritual wisdom part. The empathy is harnessing the value of compassion as an engine for success. You know, I'm so excited. Compassion and success come together at this wisdom age time. And you will learn Metta Karuna Mutita Ubeka, originally from a Buddhist monk. Yeah. Which I will share with you. You see those kinds of terms before, but I will spin it in the way that's quite unique with timeless wisdom. Evident, evident based science explanation, simple practice, and inspiring example that right after the talk you know what to do to move your spiritual wisdom. And tomorrow we will start with loving kindness. Open your heart to lead. Yeah, Metta. Uh, I will show one uh, quick video on the middle way uh, to make you feel easy and comfortable and we give time for a chance here yeah, to look for any comment or the question. Yeah, let's enjoy this beautiful song on the middle way together. Siddhartha taught me the middle way. Happiness isn't too far away. Not to the left, not to the right. Balance is the guide. Ta ta me the middle way. Happiness is a too far away. Not too much work, not too much play. Balance is the way. Now I 
A big, big hand about number eight for wonderful Sitata, <laughs> the middle way cartoon. <laughs> 